Emily Berry here from Praise Beyond Media. Today we're going to talk about core management and leadership skills. The topics that we'll cover are really the difference between a manager and a leader. There's a lot that's said about this in pop culture. We're going to dig a little bit more deeply into that. Also, power and leadership are so tightly tied together that it's, it's really worth your while to understand where power exists and the type of power to leverage when you're trying to accomplish something um, within your organization or even your personal life. Now, managers have specific tools and techniques at their disposal, so we'll go through some of those key tools that can really help you be the best manager that you can be. And of course, part of being a wonderful leader is being a, a top-notch manager that has confidence and charisma and courage and a whole lot of other um, adjectives, of course, and, and we all like the idea of having good leaders in our lives and striving to become a leader. So there are ways that you can do this even if you are not a manager within your organization or not the top dog within any type of structure where you exist because you can be a leader at any time. The difference between a manager and a leader really starts with what are the different roles that managers within organizations may hold? And what are some of the attributes that make a good manager, a great manager, versus a great leader? There's a lot of similarities, of course, between being a top-notch manager and a leader that people want to follow. And so we'll dig into a lot of these attributes here. Within your organization, there are some typical roles. These are generic roles, but they're items that you're probably going to recognize. We're going to look at these columns here, who, what, how, and why. Typical questions that would go through your mind anyway. We're going to start down here at the bottom, which is technically at the top, with president and CEO. What in the world are they caring about within that organization? Outcomes, right? The, the president and the CEO, these are the people that are at the, the top of an organization and that are also the, the public, who the public sees and thinks about, like Apple, for example. Tim Cook is the CEO. That's who we think about, that, that his vision right now is what is guiding Apple. And so what are presidents and CEOs thinking about? Increasing the shareholder value in a public company and increasing the, the company stability. Companies want to stay in business. That's what the president and the CEO's job is. The next level is where we have our vice presidents, our um, C-levels, you know, COO, for example, would fall under C-level. Maybe there are some other roles within your organization that aren't called executives or VPs, but, but the idea is this level of manager is looking for results. They're trying to improve the overall company performance by increasing sales and reducing costs. That's where revenue comes from, right? Either make more top line or spend more so your bottom line is bigger. Um, and increasing market share, growing a company, means you need to get more customers, more segments within your industry. So that's what they're curious about. That's what, that's what their goal is. Now we get into directors, maybe general managers. They're interested in methods, methods, improving tools and processes and improving performance. So if the president and CEO is thinking, okay, we need to have the best products out there. We need to be the ones that, that um, are innovating and that people want to buy our products. And when they think of, of technology and, and the future, they think of our organization. That's the president. The VP and the C-level are like, okay, great. So let's focus on this area of engineering. Let's see if we can bring in more customers by developing a product that's going to be more suited towards uh, Generation Z, who are coming right up after millennials, right? Um, then the directors would be, OK, so how we do this is we need to improve our internal performance. We need to hire more engineers. We need to train engineers. We need to. Um, 
have a, a better marketing message. So directors are thinking more about what tools will we use to do this? Maybe a talent management database so we can keep track of, of our, our staff, not lose them, keep them motivated and uh, building the future. Then we get into managers. Managers are interested in the tool. So the director says, here are the tools that I'd like you to use and here are the processes we're improving. And managers are like, you got a boss. Thank you very much. I see these tools. I'm going to have my, my staff implement these tools. My goal as a manager is to grow and think about improving the tools and the processes. But right now, I'm making sure this stuff works. As a worker, well, individual contributors are using the tools and actually doing the work, right? So workers don't, in this category, have management, a management role. Um, they're sup some workers are team leads or supervisors, but we're gonna look at managers as the first line here, really, of um, having staff that they're responsible for. So these are the typical organization roles. Now let's define what Merriam-Webster says management is. And I just paraphrase it here because it's a lot easier to read, but it's the act or skill of controlling and making decisions. Controlling is a word that a lot of people don't like. And so with controlling, it's not controlling people. It's more of a business or a department or the future of a group of people. They're controlling, monitoring, and controlling is something that's very common in the project management vernacular. And controlling means where am I, where in my team, and where are we supposed to be, and what changes can be made. So what makes a good manager? Well, there's a lot of skills. Competence is something that gets you to be a manager, right? Knowledge of your industry, your role, your team, if you're a sports team manager. Um, the ability to align goals and actions so that the team is doing what it is that they need to do to meet that goal. That's key. That, of course, makes the team happy because they trust the competence of the manager. And of course, that's how a manager gets promotions because they're actually having outputs that their boss and their boss's boss wants for the organization. And problem solving. Have you ever worked with a manager that just simply wasn't good at problem solving? That puts a lot of stress on the team. And so we will talk about some tools for problem solving. Decision making. A manager that's able to make a decision is someone that people will trust and will get behind. And by making a decision, that doesn't just mean, okay, I got to make a decision, it's going to be this. It, it means being able to analyze the threats and the opportunities, the likelihood and the impact of those threats and opportunities occurring, and then having the courage to make a decision and stick with it instead of flip-flopping, but also having the courage to say, whoa, maybe this was a bad decision, let's go back and rethink this. Delegation is huge. As a manager, you can't do everything. And so by being able to analyze and hire the right resources and make sure that the resources are, are knowledgeable about the goals and how to do it and are coached and trained, um, then as a manager, you're able to focus more on what you're supposed to focus on, which is moving forward instead of doing the work that your individual contributors would be able to do. Uh, communication, of course, is important for every individual that exists. As far as management goes, you need to be able to communicate vertically, which is to your subordinates, not necessarily a fun word to say, uh, to your superiors, and then, of course, to all the peers um, that exist and the public and stakeholders and communication is no doubt um, something that takes time and effort to do, right? That's listening, that's analyzing, that's giving feedback, that's being proactive enough to say, oh, I think you should know this. It's also not over communicating because sometimes people hear just noise if there's too much information coming their way. So communication is what makes the world go around. Um, so what makes a good leader? Well, the same, all those things about being a good manager, right? If you think about the best leaders 
leaders in your life that you've worked with and that you've respected or people that you've maybe never met but you've read about in history books because they're great leaders or you see them on the internet today, um, they're all competent. They can make decisions. They have courage. They're great communicators. You can imagine that they've been good at delegating and building future managers slash future leaders. But what's the difference between a manager and a leader? Well, people want to follow leaders because they believe in them. And so leaders have this ability to inspire others. Uh, you, you follow a leader because you feel it in your, your heart, right? You just, you want to believe what that leader is saying and that there's magnetism there. People follow leaders very often that have the same attributes that they have or are fighting for a cause that that person believes in and they, they of course trust the competence that the leader has and, the, and they respect the courage behind it and they just feel an affiliation with that leader. Confidence is a big thing. It's one thing to be competent as a manager, for example, yes, I know my industry, I know my stuff, I can use these tools, but it's another thing to have confidence and people just feel it the other point of confidence is people feel wonderful when their leader believes in them. And that's part of delegation as a manager too, but, but it's about, wow, I am part of this team, I'm part of this movement, my leader is competent and confident, and my leader believes in me. I'm, I'm part of something that's very important. It's inspiring when we feel like we belong. Timing is of the utmost importance, right? In life, we so rarely get timing right. But this is where that leader is able to step up. The thing that that leader believes in happens to be something that's prominent at this point in time and their, their skills are there to match with what is necessary. Timing is everything, so they say. And then the ability to keep the momentum alive for a leader to realize, whoa, the timing's right, I've got my tribe, I've got my group of people, I've got my, my reason for being, whether it be something amazing or it's like this project is just great, it's gonna change the face of our PMO. Um, but keeping that momentum alive, keeping the direction going forward, and, and this is something that is needs to be analyzed a little bit more if you're a leader because you know, sometimes there's a lot of psychology behind that. How much do you remind people and, and tell them, hey, good job, but we're not done yet. Let's keep going. There's more for us to get. You can do it. Um, and then sacrifice. Ooh, nah, sacrifice is a good thing. That means that your leader believes and has so much conviction that they're willing to fight for it or work those extra hours or put themselves on the line so that the thing that they're leading towards actually works. That, this is why people want to follow leaders. And you know, there's so much information out. There's so many special leaders that have written books and deliver seminars and record videos and uh, give speeches and just speak on TV every day because there are leaders that are pundits or like Oprah Winfrey. So there's so much information on this. And so I, I really distilled this down to these six things. But of course, um, it's all about you and what you find to be inspirational. And, and the type of leader that you would want to be has to really fit who you are and what you do. But the thing is, there are ways that you can be a leader even if you know it's not the end of the world or you know you're not at war you don't have to be like napoleon because there's nothing going on right now in this boardroom um that that <laughs> that means i should behave that way so everyday leadership activities can be handled tackle stagnation look around her who's bored uh who's been doing the same thing every day is there a way to get people excited 
teach them some new things, shake it up, have an outside meeting today. Look for fresh ways to keep the momentum alive. What is your project? Do people believe in it? Is it a movement? Is there a way that you can get people just excited to want to complete this project? Have those difficult conversations. Communication is a key element of leadership and a lot of us don't like confrontation. Confrontation sounds bad. Even by saying that, did you go, ooh, yeah, of course I don't like confrontation. Well, a difficult conversation is a way of confronting a problem, not a person, but a problem and saying, I've noticed that, I feel like this, or I wish that this would occur. Um, listening and, and, and bringing information up, there's all sorts of books that exist about having difficult conversations. And if this strikes you as something interesting, then by all means, do a search on Amazon or your favorite book provider, maybe an ebook at the library, on having difficult conversations. But the reason why that helps to make good leaders is that you're, you're speaking to people on their level and you have empathy and you're able to actually understand where they're coming from, why they behave that way, and then they'll understand that about you and it's about growing and getting better. So, oh, I like this one. Be the most prepared person. Yeah. So competence is when you're able, you have knowledge, you have skills, and you simply know what is going on. It's great. If you're always prepared, then your re reputation is fantastic, and also you're not going to make mistakes, and people will look to you, listen and learn, access the big ideas and bring understanding. When you're in a, a boardroom, when you're in a, a, a big meeting, when you're um, reading articles on Twitter about innovation and entrepreneurship. You know, look at that and then, and then look at how it affects your team, your department, your organization as a whole, and then explain that to people, how they fit in to the future. Even though it feels like to them they're just sitting at their desk for 40 hours a week, no, there's, there's some out, output that is really important to something somewhere and if you're able to to understand that you yourself are going to be more inspired and you're able to help the inspiration of others so redeeming the important meaning is always always helpful now authenticity what is authenticity oh it means real or genuine not fake authentic and this is a leadership buzzword you hear this you see this you read it everywhere and I, I, I think about this a lot because the notion of being authentic is very romantic, right? I am an authentic leader. Well, you cannot always be authentic. If you are an introvert and you're expected to give presentations to your shareholders and mingle and network, you can't be an authentic introvert all the time. An introvert means you get energy from being alone. An introvert can be very, very wonderful at parties and give great presentations and no one knows they're an introvert. But when they go home, they're exhausted and they dread that situation where they're going to have all of their energy sapped out. So, you know, I'd like to be authentic, but I don't really believe in this. It's hard to believe in everything that you do all the time. So you can't always be honest and authentic with the way you feel. Oh, I'd like to be authentic, but I don't really like the people here. Uh, we're right in the middle of uh, election season and we've got caucuses around the country and primaries and you, you can pretty much bet that these presidential candidates do not enjoy every single person that is in the room. Uh, but there's no way that they can be authentic in that situation. Sometimes you're bored. Oh gosh, this is the 15th meeting on this that I've had because I'm doing a road show to sell this thing I believe in. You know, I've, I can't tell you I'm bored that I've done this a million times. Um, I'd like to be authentic, but I'm preoccupied. I'm not present in what we're doing right now. 
Oh, I'd like to be authentic, but I'm afraid. That's a big one. We want leaders that are courageous and are always, you know, inspirational and keep that momentum alive. So it's hard to be authentic. So I take from that as be authentic to yourself. Overall, overall, what do you believe in? What are you working towards? What is it that you're trying to build with everyone? That's authenticity. It's not, how do I feel right now? <laughs> it's how do I feel with a big picture? And then sometimes it's necessary to reframe what your goals are or what the capabilities are of the future endeavor. So be authentic to yourself and reframe when necessary or you'll lose your way. People will see through you. They will not trust you. You'll have false confidence because you won't be authentically thinking, I'm afraid I might make the wrong choice here. Um, and the benefit of being authentic to yourself, knowing yourself, is you'll build those general, genuine relationships because you'll be able to know yourself and have those difficult conversations and authentic relationships are good to have. So the difference between a manager and a leader really has to do with uh, the role within your organization and having the, the attributes of doing well at your job and then a leader is inspiring others to do well at their job for them to be their best. Now these are the good types of leaders, right? We're looking at you know, the ones that are, that, are, that are good for society and good for organizations. And so hopefully I've given you some ideas on how you can be a leader regardless of what your role is within an organization or within a, a civic group or wherever it is um, that you spend a great deal of your time. Well, my name's Emily Berry and this has been the first piece of core leadership and management skills. If you have any questions, please contact me at emily at or go to our website, praiseon.com. Thank you.